I have been a product data scientist for more than six years now, but to get to a point where I'm senior enough to get six figures offers, it has been a lot of effort. And now, given my experience, I know that you can do it much easier. And that's why I shot this video. I'm gonna tell you about five core skills for a data scientist that you need to get your first job. And for each of those skills, I created a scale of knowledge from one star to three stars. That's why you know when you have three stars on all of the five skills, you are ready for your first job. Hi, my name is Andre. I'm a data scientist. I live in the US and on this channel, I talk about tech journey, career, data science, and bunch of other stuff. So please subscribe. First, what does product data scientist do? Data science is actually pretty wide field. Uh, some people say that data scientists necessarily build ML models. Some people say that. Some people say that data scientists must, I don't know, know math and be a research type. Well, there are very different definitions, but a product data scientist exists for one purpose only, is to help company make better product decisions. Usually it comes in combination and in collaboration with product managers and other folk who are focused on the product. Data scientist is the kind of person that looks at data and says, okay, we gotta go this direction. This direction is for growth, or we gotta stop doing this or that. It's just you help make decisions. How do you do that? How do you help making better decisions? Well, for that, you have five core skills that each data scientist has. First is SQL. SQL is a language that you use to get data from the database to actually work on data and manipulate data. And to draw insights from data, you need data. And SQL is a language, is a skill that you will be tested on on every single one of your data scientist interviews. So you need to spend a considerable amount of time on it. So you're gonna extract data with SQL and you're gonna do basic transformations with it. Then you have Python. Python or in the past it has been R, but now it's dominantly Python. You're gonna use Python for data manipulation and you're gonna use Python a lot to do some statistical calculations. A lot of the Python that you're gonna use is gonna be in context of experimentation. So you're gonna calculate experimentation and A-B tests and metrics with Python. Then you have stats. Some people say that, well, you need to know probability. Some people say, well, no, you need to know fundamentals. Mostly you need to know how to conduct and calculate results of A-B tests. That's all that you're gonna need. First of the core skills is data visualization tools. So you're gonna have to create charts and dashboards to actually communicate with people who are not used to just looking at tables and looking at raw data. You're gonna have to create visuals for them. And there are plenty of tools on the market now. There's Tableau, there's Looker, Metabase, but they all kind of work the same. So first is visualization and then fifth is product metrics, understanding, product sense. You have to be a good data scientist. A good product data scientist is a little bit of product manager. So you're gonna have to understand what kind of metrics there are, uh, how you make product decisions and so on and so forth. You might say, oh my God, that is way too many skills, but don't worry, don't worry. I'm gonna tell you what you need in each and every one of those. First, SQL. There are a bunch of free SQL courses online like this one. What I did wrong in my journey is I focused a lot on theory and like how databases work and how they're related and stuff like that. You need to grasp base concept of theory and then you go to practice. Just go to practice, go to Data Lemur or go to Strata Scratch and start solving practice exercises because a lot of those are going to be like almost exactly equal to those that you're going to be asked on your interview so just go do that go solve that don't spend too much time and three levels of mastery for sql is first you can write simple select statements it's uh, like nothing fancy maybe some simple joints it's going to be one star then two stars you can write selects you can write group buys simple windows maybe 
wears, like you're kind of comfortable, but there are some hard tasks that uh, you you struggle a little bit. And then three stars when you're ready for your first job is you write highly optimized, uh, clean, efficient code, and you can solve complex window function problems. That is basically all there is to it. It's just like, it takes a lot of practice to learn. Then there's Python. For Python, there is a standard set of uh, quote unquote data science libraries that you're gonna use most often. It is pandas, it is numpy, scipy, maybe matplotlib. And for Python fundamentals, I suggest that you spend more time. Because my mistake was, <laughs> Foolishly enough, it was opposite from SQL. I didn't spend enough time on the fundamentals. And then I just copied, you know, copy pasted code. There was no AI when I studied. So I just, I went to Stack Overflow. I found code, it worked. And I'm like, oh, I'm so cool. Now my program runs, hey. But I didn't really understand how Python works. Meaning that I didn't understand syntax of Python. And while it works when you just starting out, then later on it creates problems. So the, once again, tons of free materials out there. Uh, just go to this website, study when you understand enough about objects, functions, and so on and so forth. And then once you have fundamentals, go straight to Kaggle. Kaggle is a, a data science competition website where you can find a lot of data sets, but more importantly, you can find how different people approach data problems. And they're just like, you can look at somebody else's code and you can see them using all of the, uh, you know, analytical data science uh, libraries like pandas numpy, and you can look how it works. And then you can like reverse engineer and understand it better. Once again, after you have the fundamentals, same as with SQL, go straight to practice, but pay attention more to somebody else's code. Like look at examples of people's code and try to understand why it works or why it doesn't work. There are plenty of examples on Kaggle that you can use. And once again, three starts for mastery of this is first is you can load your data set to data frame like to pandas and you can maybe do simple group bytes once again simple manipulations second you use pandas numpy but you don't have to look it up every time you use it and maybe you can handle some small or simple errors in your code and then you get three stars not only when you write clean of course error free code but when you can take any A-B test, any data set, any experiment, and that you can work on it and calculate all of the statistical metrics, not just copy paste it from ChatGPT or Stack Overflow or whatever, but you can actually explain every step along the way that you're doing. When you have that, you are not like, of course, by any means a senior professional, but you are ready to be a data scientist. You're ready for the first job, that is for sure. Third core skill is statistic. Once again, Statistics is wide field. Lots of stuff to be learned there, that's for sure. But you need to focus mostly on basic statistical definitions. Like you need to know what is mean, average, mode, like what is standard deviation. You have to know standard limit theorem. And then you need to know how to conduct a B test, how to conduct experiment. For different metrics, there are usually different kinds of statistical tests. Uh, and you need to understand the differences between them. There's a great place to start. Once again, it's free. It's a YouTube channel of Josh Stremer. It's called StatQuest. It's absolutely perfect. It's a little bit more scientific, but still you can find everything you need for your first job there. Just go there, look at p-value, look at experiment analysis, and it's going to be enough for your first job. So one star in this skill is when you know about mean, modes, average, median, but you actually struggle with statistical tests. Two is, you know, one or two statistical tests you can actually conduct 
and design an experiment from start to finish and you can draw insights from it and then you can communicate those insights as well. So that's going to be two stars. And three stars is when you can go a little bit beyond that. So you can create advanced experiments designs like multi-arm bandits, you know, common experimentation uh, caveats and mistakes like uh, picking problems and you can communicate clearly result of experiment because it's often not enough to just say okay we have a p-value of 0, 03 that's why we uh, reject now hypothesis blah 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 nobody knows what p-value is except data scientists or data analysts like you need to actually be more specific more clear and communicate what's happening in the product for people who don't know statistics and this is a lot of the times it's the most difficult part because people don't actually understand why we need to wait for a result, what statistical significance means, etc, etc, etc. And when you know how to communicate those results clearly, you're going to have great result in your interview as well. First one is data visualization. It's very simple to get started on that. You just take any data set from Kaggle, you go to Tableau, you download Tableau, and you try to visualize it. And when you do that, ask yourself questions like, is it something that's interesting? Like look in the, at this data set, what kind of questions I have. A lot of the junior data scientists and analysts, they make this mistake. They visualize without thinking what the conclusions are gonna be. Like, why am I making this? What kind of questions am I answering? Because every chart and graph, it is basically an uh, answers to some questions that product people might have. And you present those answers with a chart. That's really all there is to it. So one star is when you just build default dashboards, like you just copy somebody else's dashboard and maybe you connected it to different data source. It's already good enough and it's a start. Then two is when you know all of these fonts and you build customizable dashboards with filters, etc., etc. But you get three stars when the dashboards you built are two things, clean and self-explanatory. So clean meaning that there is nothing extra on them. And two, self-explanatory means that you look at the dashboard and it's already clear why it's been made. Like what kind of question does it answer? I would practice, I would just take a lot of different data sets and I would try to come up with different metrics like product metrics on those data sets. And then I would visualize. So the three stars only comes from practice, practice, practice. Uh, this is one of the skills that I can say that if you have like at least two stars that you know all of the functions of these tools, you're gonna get a job, don't worry. Three comes with experience, but it's arguably the most important one. And then fifth is the product sense. Product sense is a little bit invisible, right? So what is product sense? People know what to do with product, but you're not a product manager, right? It is not exactly your job to kind of know what to do with product, but you have to be. You have to wear shoes as a product manager to be good at what you do. Because everything you do with data eventually is just influence the strategy of product and basically you are a collaborator in the bigger picture. You have to remember that. So the way I would learn now how to get the product sense, I would just solve a lot of product cases. There are great resources like interview query, or you could go to blogs of big companies like Meta, and you go to this blog and you see what kind of changes has been made. And you try to think why the changes in the products that have been made in the past, why have, have they been made? And you try to put shoes of product manager and data scientists that has been working on that and you try to imagine what kind of metrics did they look into like was it just like dao mao conversion engagement because a lot of the times these basic metrics are not good enough i had a multiple coaching session with data science manager from meta 
And he told me, because we had one of the product cases about new feature on Facebook, and I told him that one of the things that I would measure as a data scientist is engagement, like time spent. And he told me a lot of the times, just pure raw engagement isn't enough. It's not good enough metric, like average time spent or total time spent, because like there are tons of different kinds of engagement that we don't want. Like think about the product that has highest engagement, casino. Do we want to be like casino? Probably not. We are a completely different platform. And that's when I thought that the difference in product sense of a good data scientist and a great data scientist is in depth of thinking. Like when you can take basic metrics and then you can go one level deeper and deeper and deeper and then you're thinking, okay, if just pure engagement isn't good enough, then what kind of engagement are we tracking? Then what are we looking for? What is the core of our platform? And I know it might sound way. You can start on baseline, like learning about a bunch of uh, product metrics like activation, engagement, retention, monetization, metrics like conversion, average revenue, Dow, Mao, and it's gonna be uh, enough for baseline. But if you wanna go beyond that, then once again, you really need to practice and you really need to solve these product cases. And when you go and solve them, don't save money here. Uh, get yourself a mentor, get yourself a more senior person and ask them, does my solution make sense? Is this the kind of metrics? Is this the kind of approach that you would choose? Like what kind of decisions would you make here and why? And that's the only way basically that you would grow. And you can kind of bypass years of experience with these coaching sessions with a senior specialists. So one star here is when you know about all the core metrics like conversion, down mile. You get two stars when you know about whole set of metrics around activation, engagement, retention, monetization, and you know which one to choose when. And you basically feel pretty comfortably with most of the product questions. And you get three stars when you can go one level beyond that go deeper and your metrics not only make sense in a general way, they're more personalized to the domain where you solve problem. And when you have three stars, I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm confident that you will have a job. There's secret six core skill here, which is you know how to use machine learning algorithms. But when you're just starting out, just knowing about linear regression and logistic regression is going to be enough for you, at least to get your first job. And then you can grow there and then you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. So if you have three stars in all of these five skills, and if you have some knowledge in this secret six skill, then you have everything you need to be a data scientist. And just trust me that the time is going to pass like that. And you look back and you're like, oh, wow. I know everything already there is to know. And I wish you success on the journey. I wish you success on the data science journey. And I wish you luck on finding your first job. If you like this video, please drop me a comment, like, and once again, good luck to you. Bye-bye.